All right, what is up guys? This is Ivan from BrainyBiz.com. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to connect one of these and use uh, the Nokia 5110 LCD display. Uh, now these guys come from the era of these kinds of cell phones here. Uh, that uh, Nokia, this is a Sony Ericsson, but it uses the same kind of screens. Uh, so basically these guys, there was a lot of them left over. Uh, and uh, when I mean a lot, there there's like millions of these things out there. So they repurposed the uh, LCD uh, when these phones started uh, not selling anymore. So basically they did, uh, they sold it out and uh, by using a little PC board like this, we can use it with uh, an Arduino or any other controllers. Uh, what's cool about these guys is that they're really cheap and they're not too hard to actually connect to an Arduino. Um, what we're going to do today, we're going to do the same thing we did with the OLED tutorial display and that we are going to use the DHT11 temperature sensor and we're basically going to use the same code uh, that we used before except we're just going to modify it a little bit so it fits on this screen because the OLED display was 128 by 64 I believe and I think these guys are 84 by 84 I would have to check but I think that's about right so the, res the resolution is a little bit lower on these guys so we just need to tweak the code and stuff like that uh, the bitmap that we used is going to be displayed on here and also it has backlight LEDs there's four of them on the sides here and we can control the brightness of these guys uh, using a PWM pin on the UNO so we'll see that in the code also uh, now the connections as you can see these guys use 3.3 volts uh, never connect them to 5 volts so we're using the 3.3 from the UNO to drive the display and the DHT11 and also one thing to keep in mind they say I mean there's a lot of tutorials out there uh, using the uh, how to use these guys and they say not to drive them directly from the pins uh, digital pins of the UNO because these are 5 volts uh, digital signals and they say well you should use resistors to bring down the voltage to 3.3 volt um, now you know that's my opinion but I've been using these guys for a while and uh, you know I, like this one has been uh, I left it on for like I would say a week and without using any resistors on the digital pins and it's still going fine so I don't know if that was older versions or whatever but when I connect these I never use resistors and if it's sim if it's uh, easier to connect and less parts I'll, I'll try that first so I'm not using any resistors on my digital pins, but on the pin that drives the backlit, the backlit I have a 330 ohms connected to uh, limit the current that the LEDs are going to use. So like I always say, go to our website, BrainyBiz.com, go to the tutorial page for this one, and you'll find the schematic, and you'll see all the connections a lot clearer uh, on the schematic than I can show you on the video here. So we're going to cut here, we're going to go look at the code. Like I said, the code looks a lot like the OLED uh, tutorial because it uses the same library, the uh, U8G lib, which is compatible with this guy. So we're just going to make a little bit of modification and then we'll come back and plug it in and see the results. So let's go take a look. All right, sir, we are in our uh, code for the Nokia 5110. So we're going to start at the top. Uh, basically, for anyone who's been watching our tutorial, uh, you'll know that, that you'll notice that this is really the same code that we used for the OLED display. Um, the only thing we had to change was this little part here, which I'll explain when we get to it. So we start from the top. We're including libraries, so the 8UG lib and the DHT. Uh, as always, go to our website, find the tutorial, and we have a link at the bottom of the page to download all the files that you need to create this, uh, to recreate this tutorial. Then we're defining the pin, what's, uh, what is connected to what. So A1 is connected to the DHT11, and the backlight pin on the Nokia is connected to pin 11. And we're going to use that to dim, to uh, play around with the intensity of the backlight uh, LEDs on the Nokia. And then we're initializing our um, libraries so AUG lib and this is the portion that changed from the OLED tutorial is this here the PCD 8544 is actually the controller that takes care of the display on the Nokia 5110 and the AUG lib has the function for that so all you need to do is when you call when you uh, define the library 
you do this underscore and the controller and that's it the rest here is the same so basically we're just telling which pin is connected where on the uno and you can see the uh, reference here here we're building an array it's called Brainy bitmap and this portion here was all created with the little LCD assistant software uh, basically what that does is that you create let's say in Photoshop a little bitmap uh, on, of the dimension that would fit on the resolution of the display so uh, the OLED had uh, 128 by 64 and I think uh, the Nokia is 84 by 84 I believe so basically as long as it fits in there you'll be able to use it so you import that little bitmap that you created in black and white from Photoshop into the LCD assistant and then it outputs to a file all this, in, all this information here uh, so basically we're putting all this information in the array and we'll call it later to display on the LCD. Uh, then we have the draw function and that gets called in the main loop so we'll go to it here so there's a function here draw bitmap from uh, uhglib and we're saying put the bitmap at this position and use the information that's in brainy bitmap that we just saw at the top. And then we set the font and uh, if you go to our website again yeah, there's a link for the HUG library uh, you can look at their wiki there's a lot of font that you can choose some bigger some smaller italic bold uh, you really have a lot of choices so I encourage you to go check that out so we're using this font here which is the pro font 11 and then we're drawing some strings on the display at position x 0 15 we're putting a T column space at 0 35 H column space and then we're setting our print position to 1515 so right after the T column column and we're putting the temperature so we're printing the temperature there the zero means we don't want any decimal numbers and then after we display the temperature we're moving a little bit and we're putting a C for Celsius and we do the same thing for the humidity same thing except we're replacing the C for a percentage sign and that's the draw function now at the main setup we're going to do an analog right at, of the backlight pin to 50. <clears throat> 50 basically is quite high because it goes from 0 to 255 so if you put it at 0 it's full on if you put it at 255 it's almost off basically so 50 yeah, but you can play around with yours and see what uh, what intensity you would like so that's the way we control the backlight and then our main loop which will uh, go from um, from here to here and repeat so we're reading the DHT11 pin and then we're calling the draw function when the draw function is done we're doing a delay of five seconds because the DHT11 they say shouldn't be accessed more than two seconds uh, once every two seconds to um, get uh, good values so that's it guys so that's the whole code like I said it looks a lot like the uh, OLED tutorials code basically is the same thing the only thing we changed what the, was the uh, naming here PCD 84 uh, 85 44 and we changed the X and Y values here to fit that display since it has a different res resolution than the OLED display so we're gonna verify we're gonna upload that and we're gonna go take a look at the result on our breadboard so let's go all right i just wanted to make a quick video on the lcd assistant software uh we had some question i had some question on facebook and on our um, website some people were having difficulty transforming their bitmap using the uh, application so what i'm going to do i'm going to go and file load image and here's the little bitmap that i created I created this in uh, photoshop uh, basically what I did is that I made it uh, small enough pixel wise so it fit on the LCD that I was using uh, this one is 50 by 50 and also I made it as a bitmap so basically black and white only uh, no shades of gray or anything like that so you just have to make sure that you save it also as a BMP BMP that is what I'm using here and it uh, worked fine so we're gonna go ahead and load that and there you can see the preview of it uh, the byte orientation needs to be horizontal because the library that we're using uh, reads the information that way so you need to make sure that that is set to horizontal size we're not going to touch because the bitmap is already the right size and the rest of the settings that you see here we're not going to touch so those are all fine so we're going to go and file save output 
give it a name of a file. We're only going to use the file to get the information because we're going to copy and paste that into our sketch. So we're going to save, go ahead, save that. Did it. I'm going to open the file using Notepad. And there you see it. So you see that's all the information that was created by the LCD Assistant software. So all we need to do is copy all of this information. Well, not this part, but write all the numbers and put that in our array. And then we'll be able to display our bitmap on the LCD. So I hope this uh, helps uh, anyone who was having problem. And now we're going to go back and look at the result on our breadboard. Okay, so we're back. Uh, we uploaded the code to the Uno already. So I'm going to plug it in and we're going to see the results on the, hopefully the result on the little screen right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And there you go. So bitmap is displaying fine. We're getting values from the DHT11, uh, temperature and humidity. So basically this is kind of like the same thing we did with the OLED uh, display, except it's using the Nokia 5110. Uh, so basically, if you'd rather use one or the other, it gives you uh, options. And these guys are a little bit less expensive than the OLED. Of course, the resolution is not as uh, as uh, as high. And you know, OLED display they create their own light, so they're easier to read. Like uh, if I close the light here. So as you can see, even with the light off, uh, the LED do a pretty decent decent job to actually. Uh, backlit the uh, the display a uh, little bit of modifications you could do with this project you could put a potentiometer and you can map the analog values of the pot to uh, pwm values so you could adjust the brightness of the leds with the potentiometer so that's it for this week guys so i hope you enjoyed the uh, this tutorial i mean there's a lot of tutorials out there on the 5110 <laughs> we just wanted to make our own so we can have it in our li tutorial library so, um, you know, not complicated, but still something that you might use in your future project. Um, as a side note, uh, BrainBits.com has partnered with Instructables.com. And so if you become a pro member of uh, Instructables or already are a pro member, uh, you can get a coupon code for BrainBits.com that will give you 15% off anything in our store. And you can use it as many times as you want every time you check out. So I invite you to check that out, and uh, instructable.com is a great resource to see what people are coming up with. So, so that's it for this week, guys. Uh, once again, my name is Ivan uh, from BrainyBest.com, and I hope to catch you guys real soon. Take care. <laughs>